morning, everyone. Morning. And praise the Lord. Amen. Good morning. Want... Praise Jesus. Amen. We want to thank God for this new day that he has enabled us to get together. We don't take it for granted that we can meet in his presence this early morning. Thank you, uh, my sister Susan, for leading us in prayer. Uh, sorry for being late, I didn't intend to, but I wanted to make sure that I'm in office. Okay, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much for this morning. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you that, Lord, you give us this opportunity to come together. Uh, one way of fighting the battle against the enemy, the evil one in the world, who presses hard that we fail to get together because there is power in unity. There is power whenever we come together. There is, there is a victory. Each time we come together, we are encouraged, we stand strong, we grow in faith. So, Lord, we pray this morning that this that you have given us, my Father, we shall not fail in any way to keep together because we know there is power. There is power in coming together as your children. And that's why the enemy fights very hard to hinder us as children of God from coming together. So even as we sit together at your feet this morning, Lord, we ask you to minister to us. Speak to us, Lord, even as we raise our voices, crying to you uh, for your intervention in different areas. We pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you minister to us. And help me, Father, deliver your word as you instruct me. Silence all voices, grant us clear network, and help us, my Father, be able to hear from your throne. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again, friends, for being here this morning. Our topic this morning is the power of unity in spiritual warfare. The power of unity in spiritual warfare. Uh, uh, immediately, I saw this. The first thing I remembered in, in my language, uh, there, is, there is a saying. I know it is in different, uh, different languages. You know how it is said in the language that a getera in a nigo gate gofa. Or in Luganda, they say, a galia wamo gegami gumba. There is power in coming together, there is power in unity. And when we are united, mm -hmm. we can accomplish much. When we are together, we can resist the enemy because the friends. We are in a spiritual warfare. We, we cannot deny it. We cannot, I mean, resist and, and, and pretend that there is no way. Yesterday, the, the, the prophet was saying. Sorry, kind, kindly, kindly mute if you, if you are unmuted. Um, I think Deborah. Deborah, there is some uh, noise in the background, and Doreen. Okay, thank you. I hope she has taken note of that. Uh, yesterday, the provost made a, a mention in her someone and said, there are people who say that they are, demo they are no demons, and the moment you mention, you think like that and say that they are no demons, the, that, the fact is that you yourself are the demon. So at the, on this, this morning, I don't expect anyone to doubt that we are in a spiritual affair. It is the fact and it is scripture, the Bible has said it clear, we are in battle. You like it or not, you are in battle because the kingdom of darkness is working and it, working hard to resist the expansion of the kingdom of God. And, the, and the, uh, we read in the scripture that since the days of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God has suffered violence and violent men take it by faith. So friends, there is battle, we are in war, and we must know that as we are in war, we are not alone. The most important thing to know is that this battle was won many years ago. Our Lord Jesus Christ conquered it, conquered the enemy on the cross over 2,000 years ago. So for us who are here now, we have victory in Christ Jesus, and he has given us weapons 
on how to resist the evil one and how to be able to fight and overcome. And so one of the, one of the strategies of overcoming the enemy, one, one of the tools is, is unity. And friends, what is this unity? What is unity? Unity, where, where this is, uh, this, when we are together, we know that God has commanded a blessing upon us when you're united. God commands a blessing when we are together. Because in Psalm 133 says it all, how good it is pleasant it is when God's people come together and concludes by saying that there he bestows his blessings. When we are united, God releases his blessings upon us. Unity is a powerful weapon in spiritual warfare, and it is one of the tools that we can be very sure to use and conquer. When we come together, we, are, we come together in, in one mind, one agreement, one passion, and we work in agreement. Once we get to that level of being one in mind, one in agreement, one in passion, friends, we are able to resist the devil. But the moment we are together, we can as well be together physically. But once we are divided in mind, we just give away for the devil to penetrate. As I was coming this morning, I, I thought about something to do. I thought about how the church allowed the, the, the church, I mean, the, the enemy penetrated into the church and had homosexuals themselves come to take positions. I was just thinking that when we see the church in England saying that it's okay for, for us to bless the homosexuals, actually it was the enemy himself who found his way into the church. Why? Because while people prayed, you remember that parable in Matthew chapter 13, where the farmer planted good, good, good seed, and when they went to check the following morning, the workers found that even the, the, the bad seed had grown the, the weed. And they said, well, how come that we, bought, we planted a good seed and this is growing? And, and Jesus said, while the, the, the owner said, while you went to sleep, the enemy came in and planted wrong seed. So I believed that the Church of England slept. And why the Church of England slept, those with an agenda entered into the church. And for us, I think it's something that we really need to be praying over and over on who enters the church, who becomes a leader, who is, even when it comes to the, the uh, electing bishops, are we praying? Friends, we should be praying for, for leaders at every level that we do not have the devil planting in his own. But anyway, putting that aside, we, we see examples of uh, what unity can do in the Bible. The thing that I immediately thought about was that people that were attempting to build a tower with an evil purpose. But you see, because of unity, they were united in purpose. They were building this tower until God said, hey, you know what? We had better disorganize these people because if they can be united and do this, and, and you see, they were able to, 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 to build that long <clears throat> until God frustrated their motives and brought that to an end. But also we see another example in the Acts, in Acts of Apostles chapter two, verse one says, when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place or in one accord. They were in one accord, one accord, is when the disciples came together in unity. This means that they were one in mind, one in accord, one in agreement, one in passion, that is heart issues. They were in agreement, they were together. They agreed upon everything they came to do together. So friends, unity is to have one mind, one agreement and one passion. And, and we know that is the reason why the devil uses this also his, 
his skill of dividing. He comes only to kill, steal, and destroy. But how does he do this? He works very hard to divide. He will divide, he will work left and right to cause, to cause disunity, to cause fights amongst believers, amongst family members. That is his mission right from the beginning. His mission has not changed even today. And why is that his mission? Because the devil himself, he knows that once the family has one mind, he knows once we are together, united in mind, once we are united and we are one in agreement and we are united, we are one in passion, he knows for sure he's defeated. He's defeated in battle, he's defeated in his attacks, in his schemes, he is defeated and God's blessings. Uh, continue to be bestowed on God's people. So the devil fights hard to see that children of God do not attain that blessing which God has ordained us to. Because I'll keep, I'll keep echoing out Psalm 133. God's blessings are upon God's people when we are united. And I want to thank God for this privilege, the opportunity has given to us that for now these many coming three years or so, that we have been meeting in this way. And friends, it doesn't matter how far you are, as long as we are united and we are in agreement in our prayer, God is moving and a lot of things is happening. Praise the Lord. We deny the devil an opportunity to work against us. What is the devil's motive? He, he, his motive is that he disorganizes our unity, divides us, and it causes us to be in disagreement. And once we are in disagreement, there is no way we'll attain God's blessings. You think about how the devil comes and lies to you and begins telling you, you know, they don't love you. They don't care for you. I have, you, you must have heard some people say, I mean, I, I, actually there's one lady, you know, particularly one lady, old, old lady, not from all saints, from another church where I have been. And this woman lost her husband so many years ago. I think it could be close to 15 years or so. Now, when she lost her husband, unfortunately, the, the church, the reverend himself did not go to, to, to visit her or for burial. But the church, the members from church went and buried. <clears throat> but because she wanted the church leader himself to come, she vowed never to step in church again. And she totally got lost. And I think about this woman and I see how the devil managed to, to isolate her and put her in a corner and cause her to think they hate you, no one cares for you, you are a widow, you are a good for nothing. And let me tell you, this woman has lived a miserable life. A miserable life, it is the current, a current leadership that has tried hard to reach her, even when they have reached her. She keeps referring to the old, old clergy who did not visit her. People, I want you to know that each time you feel thoughts of, of, of getting isolated and you feel that you're in a place no one cares for you, know for sure that devil is at work. Because he, that is his purpose to, to divide he uses that strategy of divide and rule. Once he divides and separates you from the rest of the team, he puts you in a corner, he takes over, he takes control. You cannot call to God, you cannot pray. And besides, remember the need, the power of unity. You can pray together when you are, together, when, when, um, you are in agreement. When you are together, you are able to pray and things happen. But once you are alone, even reading the Bible can sometimes be difficult. Even prayer can be very difficult. So I want to pray this morning that the Lord will help you always remember that the devil is fighting to make sure that you are isolated and you are separated from the rest of the team. Because when you're together, you can overcome. Again, the other thing I also want to encourage us friends, there is need for besides this coming together on a prayer Zoom, 
and in church fellowships. There is need for you as an individual to have a prayer partner, accountability partner, someone you are accountable to, someone who will know where you are at whatever stage, who is someone who can always pray for you and you're sure that even if you are not able to pray, even if you are very weak, you cannot raise your voice. It's important for you to have an accountability pattern, partner who can be able to pray for you at all times. So please, if you don't have one already, I want to encourage you to have one. So I said uh, unity is when we have one mind, one agreement and one passion. So what is this one mind? One mind, one agreement. This, uh, Brother Grace, kindly, kindly uh, uh, mute yourself. There is a lot of echo coming from your end. Thank you very much. Okay, now the devil attacks the minds of people with gossip. Gossip, is a, <laughs> gossip has broken families. Gossip has broken relationships. The devil works very well in that area. He attacks people's minds with jealousy. Once he raises uh, jealousy in hearts of men, you are in fellowship, you, and someone develops jealousy, thinks, why should so and so pray so much? I mean, he thinks he's the one who knows it all. I've heard the people make comments that there are some people who are making uh, they, 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 are, they, are, they are making a name for themselves and because they think they pray more than anybody else. Jealousy, jealousy kills fellowships, friends, unforgiveness, hatred. Those are the, 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 those are the weapons that devil uses to kill the oneness in mind. Now, when you begin to think such thoughts in your heart, when you begin to get those such thoughts in your heart, you will just be sure that the devil is working to separate you and kill your relationship so that he pushes you to the corner in order to, for him to torment you and accomplish his purposes in your life. Friends, resist that. Resist that. That's why we always come to God in repentance because there are those thoughts that come in our minds. You know, for th that's what that's where the 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 the, the revivalists have have arrived today. The have 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 a local No time for walking in the light. That every time someone comes and says, "Abol Ganda Musoni," where I have thought this evil thought, and they keep repenting and they keep walking in the light every other time. It's of a great benefit, friends. Do not allow such thoughts to run through your mind because the devil uses such to destroy you. The devil himself will still make attempts with the pleasures of life to kill your passion. That's another thing the enemy works over against us as a church. He will bring so many things around you and he brings temptations to cause you to, to have desires in the things of the world. He will cause the things to look so appealing. It will cause you to admire being like other people, the trendings, they are things that will look so attractive in the world. The other, th the other thing I remember, one time I've shared this some time back, I was going to make a dress and there was this, this, this trending of having a dress with one arm had just come. It had just come in uh, so many years ago. So I really wanted to have that dress. So I went to a tailor who happened to be a neighbor to my spiritual mom. So she would always see me go to my spiritual mom's shop to pray with her. And so I, only got a, I went to her to make for me a dress. I told her the dress I wanted to make. Without me knowing her, I, never, I had never interacted with her. We had never talked together. But she outrightly told me, young girl, I cannot make for you that dress because you are a child of God. And I asked myself, what has this got to do with a child of God? Me, I mean, I want to. And, and she told me, no, 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 no. There are things that you don't. Other people can, but not you. So when I told my spiritual mom, she told me, hey, that woman loves you. She keeps telling me that you, you, she hears your prayer. When we are praying, she hears you and she loves you. And, and since then, my, I was like, okay, 
Yes, it's one thing to be saved, but it's another thing to go to another level of knowing that me at my level, I, I cannot do this. So friends, there are temptations that will come in different ways, but all these temptations are just to cause you to fall in love with the things of the world that will kill your passion for God and you will end up being divided. Also, the other way the enemy attacks unity, the devil causes fights, he causes arguments, he causes quarrels, he causes, you know, you know, divisionism among believers so that members can scatter from the fellowships. Fellowships will die without people's knowledge and they keep thinking so-and-so is bad, so-and-so is bringing this instead of praying for believers. Friends, I want to encourage us if it happens to you and you realize that someone, someone is bringing fights, take them to God in a prayer. And if you are the one who, who is fighting the fellowship, just know that you need to get back to God, that he gives you the grace to resist evil. Praise the Lord. Paul writes in Romans chapter 16, verse 17, and says, I urge you, brothers, to watch out for those who cause divisions and obstacles in your way that are contrary to the teaching you have learned. Paul knew that there are those people that come to cause divisions. Divisions, and they become obstacles, standing in the way, hindering God's work from moving. And, and actually, this God gave me this scripture last week on Friday, and it was very strong on my heart, and I was praying into it, that God helps us to know those that come to church to divide to separate, to cause people to hate one another so that we may be alert and be aware of the schemes of the enemy because he has not changed from the beginning. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But again, I want us also to look at um, the text which was appointed for the day. That was Exodus. I just wanted to, to, to look at a few verses in Exodus chapter 14. We see a story of, of Moses, God, I beg your pardon, Exodus chapter four, when God called Moses and he was sending him to, to rescue the children of Israel, sending him to Pharaoh. Moses gave many excuses. Moses gave many excuses, but God kept telling him uh, in verse, um, verse 10, but in chapter four of Exodus, but Moses said to the Lord, oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I'm slow of speech and of tongue. Moses was giving excuses, but the Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth? Who, who makes him mute or deaf or sing or blind? It is, is it not either Lord? Now therefore go and I will be with your mouth and teach you what you shall speak. But he said, oh my Lord, you know Moses kept giving excuses and verse 14, some we are interested in. Verse 14 says, then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses and he said, is there not Aaron, your brother, the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Behold, he is coming out to meet you and when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I'll be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you both what to do. Friends, even God noticed as, uh, as, as Moses gave, gave uh, many excuses, God knew, God knew that Moses needed the company. God, Moses needed company, like we all need company, we need unity, we want, needed to, someone to, to support, someone to work with. Because we, without someone to, to work together, you can easily get discouraged and you can easily give up. So Moses needed an Aaron. You too, my brother and my sister, you need an Aaron. You need someone. You need someone to walk with. You need someone to pray with. You need someone to share with and be able to encourage one another. Again, as I already mentioned, that the enemy knows. He knows the secret in unity and the, and the agreement. He knows that secret very well. Because 
once we come together in unity, friends, there is power. There is power. And that's why Jesus promised in Matthew 18, 19, that if two of you agree on earth about anything, they ask, it will be done. For then my, my father, it will be done by my father. You need someone because once you, you agree over something, you agree together, you can be very sure that your prayer will easily be answered because Jesus promised so. And you know his word is true and whatever he says, he, he does it. But also the other thing, we know that God himself works in unity, you know, the Trinity, the Trinity, three in one, each person, each one of them with their own roles and purpose, but they work together. They work together, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And so there is that secret that when we are together, God's presence is in our midst because Jesus said, where two or three gather in my name, there I'll be in their midst. Praise the Lord. What else do we need more than having God in our midst? There is nothing more than that because him with us, we are confident that we are able to conquer and overcome the evil one in the name of Jesus. Friends, the other thing about it is that when we display unity as Christians, we shine God's light into this broken, dark world. We are in this world, friends. Remember, we are in the world. We are not of the world. And unless we stand together and be able to love one another, Jesus said that love, if you love one another, the world will know that you are my disciples. Now, another area is love. When we work together in agreement and in love with one another, the world sees that we are together united. The things that we do together, they cause the light to shine in the dark world. And at the end of it all, the people in the world who do not believe are able to see God and are able to praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So friends, when we are working together, the Holy Spirit works in our midst. He unites us supernaturally, helping us to break down barriers, barriers that keep us apart. It is his work. It is his work to help us accomplish that we cannot do in our own strength. But remember, he is with us when we are in agreement. He is with us when we are united. He is with us and present when we gather in his name. Praise the Lord. And of course, as we know that we are in this dark world, we are in battle. The enemy will not give us room. He will not give us space to accomplish what God wants to accomplish. He will always fight. Those things will always be there. Roman mongering will be there, but never, never run away from church because they have said this about me. Rather stand firm and be the one who is going to pray and drive out that rumor mongering or any other evil vices. How do, you, how do we build unity? We can have, how do we build unity as a church? It begins by living at peace within yourself. For you to be able to come to a point of living in unity with others, you must have peace within yourself. Um, Paul writing in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 3, he says, make every effort to keep yourselves in the spirit of binding yourselves together with peace. That is from a New Living Translation. When we are united, when we are united, I mean, when we have peace within ourselves, we can be sure to have peace with everyone else. But if you find that you don't have peace, Eh, you, you come in a fellowship, you will, the face is gloomy and you're so, I mean, it's all written all over you. People will fear to come near you or even no one will find it convenient to share their burdens with you or even to ask for you to stand with them in prayer. 
So you must be, first and foremost, you must be at peace within you. But also, besides an, an individual, how is your family? How is your family? Your household, how are you with the family members? Once you with family members are not united, then there is no way you're going to come and serve in power or minister in power to the people that you're living among. So when you start, when you start by having peace within yourself, then you can get the people around you in your family then to because uh, um, just say it in Mark chapter three, verse twenty-five, and if the house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. You cannot stand as a family when you are uh, when you are not united. And this this is uh, brings me to another another way of being able to build up this unity is the unity in um in our families. Our unity in our families. We can only stand firm, friends, and be able to to do ministry successfully if we are united in our families. If we are speaking one language, we are in agreement. We are doing things together. There is no hiding, and you know, having secrets. If we are open totally open to our spouses, to our children, to, to our parents, to the people we live with, then you come with that support from your family. You come with that uh, uh, zeal, energy, power to, to, to minister to the people, either in your workplace, your office, your business, wherever God has sent you in your world, you're able to reach out and minister to the rest of the people. But also you are able again to be able to work in unity with other people. We can, we, we can unify elsewhere if we are all together in unity when we are at, in, as a family. But once we are not together, when it, once we are not unified as a, as a family, it is going to be very hard for you to fight the, the evil one and overcome because already the enemy has entered you through your family. And is a family united. Once the family is united, as I mentioned at the beginning, agetera go gate go fa. United is what can be able to break evil. We can overcome easily because the Lord is with us. And I remember that song. It's a song that we used to sing in church. I think they still sing it at St. Luke. Luke that says, bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. I mean, you sing that song in Sunday school. In many different churches, they sing it even now. We, when we are together, we are together with cords that cannot be broken. When we are together in one hour, what no matter what the enemy brings, we are able to put it in the light and overcome. Then the other level at which we, we need to be united is in our communities. In our communities, as, as uh, believers, we should live in a united uh, community because it is when believers are united, as Jesus instructed, that the disciples not to leave Jerusalem until the power of the Holy Spirit comes. It's until we are united as believers in our community, can we be able to go out and be witnesses? Because um, um, Acts chapter 1, verse 8, uh, Jesus said to the disciples and the, in, that, in the early church that um, when the Holy Spirit, but when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of Judea. These were united, they were together, they were all together waiting on the Holy Spirit. And when he came upon them, they were able to go and, wit and became witnesses in different places, but of course, starting with Jerusalem. And the other, that is now unity in the church. Unity in the church is very crucial. Any other can fail to be united. You can be disunited in your business, uh, uh, business community or anywhere else. But friends, as a church, we cannot afford to fail to be united. 
because we know we know it is the church that the Lord himself is working to advance the kingdom of God. Yes, it is okay for us to be divided, at, I mean united at a family level, at community level, but when we, it comes to the church, let all other things can fail, but we cannot fail to stand as a church because we want to stand united. Because as a church, once we fail to, to stand in unity, we give the devil to conquer because he is fighting every other day. And the reason he begins at a personal level, because he knows once he weakens an individual, the family will be very weak. Of course, we'll have a weak church. So in all that we do, beloved, we've got to see to it that we stand firm and get united. Let, let things happen. Let, let challenges come. Let difficulties come our way. But my prayer, beloved, is that we shall remain united. And, and of course, uh, like Paul writes to, to, to the Romans in chapter 12, verse 18, that if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Friends, be at peace for as long as you, are, you have something to contribute, as long as it depends on you and you have something to do, do whatever you can to keep at peace, to have peace in the church because of course, when we talk about the church, it is you and me, it's us, us who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. We have got to work hard to see unity prevail in the church because we know the devil is doing his very best to kill, to steal, and destroy. And once we give in to the schemes of the enemy and the church is no more, this will not only affect the I mean the community of believers, but it will affect the nation. It will affect, of course, think about, I'll keep mentioning the, the church in England, how they opened up for, 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 hom for homos to come in, immorality that they cannot preach against it. How could they preach against them when they are themselves are such evil? Friends, if we do not stand as a farm, as a, as a church and stand firm, the evil one will find his way through. And when I'm talking about this church, I'm not talking about all saints. I'm not talking about St. Stephen's. I'm not talking about St. Francis. I'm talking about the universal church. Ecclesia, the body of Christ, we irrespective of where one prays from. Because, friends, the enemy is working left and right. That one, we are not going to run away from it. But most importantly, for us to stand united as a church, when someone is hurt as an individual, we arise and pray. And how do you know that the enemy is, is working hard? He has planted the agents who are coming in the name of pastors. They come in the name of believers. You see them coming in the church and you're thinking they're sisters, they're brothers, come be their agents. But when we who are children of God, faithful, stand firm and pray, we shall resist him. So when let's resist the devil, let's resist him until he flees, friends. I want to encourage us, wherever you are, find a way of seeing that you are together, praying in unity, in despite the fellowship, beyond this fellowship, beyond this prayer zone, beyond church fellowship, have a place where you know that when others fail, I know I am standing in prayer with brother so-and-so or with the sister so-and-so. Otherwise, when the evil comes and you are separate and stay alone, the enemy will conquer you. He will conquer you by telling you lies. He will bring so many lies and, and deceive you left and right. And at the end of the day, you win them. You lose the battle. You are not a loser because Christ has called you to use you as a vessel and God has never fought a battle and he has lost it. Whenever he fights, he wins. In fact, he wins the battle before it begins. So we are in a better place. We are in a better place because united as a church, we are more than conquerors because Christ made it all for us and he gave us victory before we, the, the battle began. Thank you very much for listening. Let's pray together in closing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much 
that Lord, even as we are in this broken, dark world, we are in battle, the enemy fighting your kingdom left and right on a daily basis. We know we are more than conquerors because Christ, you, you died and only conquered death. Because you conquered death, Lord, we know we are victorious. So I pray this morning that, Lord, you encourage someone, encourage someone this morning never to give up on the habit of meeting together. Lord, help us, my Father, to always have a one a unity of purpose, that knowing that we are together, united, working in agreement, the enemy will not penetrate to work against us. I pray for each one of these, my brothers and sisters gathered here this morning, even as I pray for myself, that no matter what schemes the enemy brings our way, we shall resist him and we shall conquer him because we know we are more than conquerors. Lord, take the praise, receive honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. May the Lord bless you.